Okay, so uh, we got the door uh, pretty close to where it needs to be. There's some things we're gonna have to give up. Uh, but one thing we wanna try here, now that we're almost where we wanna be, is we wanna take this strike plate and uh, move it in about one millimeter. And in theory, if we don't compress too much on the rubber seal, uh, this should be able to pull the middle of the door in that one millimeter. By the way, this is a triple square, not a star drive. So Okay, got to make sure you're using the correct tool there. Mm -hmm. So you're just loosening it just enough to tap it with your plastic hammer. Well, let's start right, there. Let's, let's try that. Okay. Okay, so we got our first door kind of where we think it's going to settle in. It's not 100% finished, but it's, I'm going to say 98%. There are some things we can do to make micro adjustments, but we don't want to make those micro adjustments until we get the bigger picture in place, which is the rest of the panel. So let's take a look and see what we did here. So I've got my, my flush uh, gauge checker. Four millimeters seems to be about where we're settling in with this situation. So our points uh, that we want to focus on are top radius. You can see we want to be as flush here. We don't want to be high here or here at this point. We want to be as good as we can be at this point. Right here, you see you see the door kind of tapering off. That's probably body work, body shop, uh, maybe a little heavy with a sander or grinder, who, who knows. Um, but these lips can be massaged in body work. And if they've been massaged with either this been set in correctly or not mocked up correctly in the shop when they're working these panel gaps, then some of this you're going to own. In this case, we want to focus here. We want this radius down here. Okay, we're, we're good there. We've got about four millimeters in this radius, which is pretty good. We, we're four millimeters, a little bit strong here, but we can make an adjustment on that later if we want to. I just don't want to do any more to this door right now to tweak it. The other point we want to focus on is right up here in this extreme, and we're just uh, slightly four millimeters strong, which is okay. And then we're flush here. Okay, so we're flush here, we're flush here, and we're flush here. Anything in between here and anything in between here, as far as a straight line and alignment, you're going to own it. So if somebody's been uh, massaging or grinding or bending the lip to uh, do this in pre-paint mock-up, if your rocker's not in the right location uh, in relation to the lip of the door, if there's a door off another car, who knows what, but... Uh, it, as far as I can tell, um, bare metal it was okay in this kit. It wasn't right, it wasn't 100%, and we're gonna have to own some of this. That's pretty good um, for most body guys. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> uh, but, but here, let's show where, where we have to give it up now. So we know we're right where we're supposed to be. Okay, we're good here. We're good at this point. Here's where we're not good. Okay, you see, you see the middle here? You see that gap in there? Yep. Okay, there's nothing. You're talking we, about the gap on this side. I'm talking about the clearance in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see. Okay, mm -hmm. nothing can be done about that. Right, because it's not one of these three points. Right, we're, so you, we're good here, we're good here. Everything in a straight line between it is you, you own it. Mm -hmm. so this is what you work on when you're in mock-up in, in body work, is that everything is dialed in here. And if these aren't working out in mock-up, this is the areas you work in a shop to get this right. If it's a door off another car, or an aftermarket door, or your fender hasn't been welded up correctly, uh, your rear quarters, all this is gonna play a role. In this case, we own this. There's mm -hmm. nothing we can do to uh, make that any better. Now, if we push it farther in to get this flush, then these are gonna be offset here and here. Mm -hmm. And we probably won't even get the door closed because it'll be pushing so tight against the uh, the, uh, the rubber molding and the, the latch to hold it in, it's going to be too much pressure. Right so now, meaning uh, adjusting the hinges or adjusting right, the... So if I move the striker in so I mm -hmm. can close up that edge, 
right now we're we're maxed with the striker because we've already tried a little bit farther. Yeah. And we're not gonna get it. So and you'd maxed. go in up here as right. well. It if... would go in there and it would go in there and you could divide all that up to, to get you where you need to get. But if we go any tighter on this car, this molding here is gonna stop us from get, getting where we wanna go. So that's why I, sometimes it's good to have um, your rubber moldings in place when you're doing maca in bare in bare metal. Yeah. Um, anyhow, so this one's worked out pretty good. Um, this doesn't look bad, but at, at this point, we're not concerned about anything about this fender whatsoever. Mm -hmm. We're going to go fix the other door to get as as good in those uh, transition points. Once we got that one, then we're going to move on to the hood and the cowl. One thing I wanted to mention was we took the bolts loose at the hinge hinges. And then we raised the door. We raised it. So we brought the door up. Mm -hmm. And we also we we pushed, pushed the door in and in to try to get everything we do here affects what happens back here. Yeah. And actually that, that adjustment, I think it was once we did both of those, yeah. the door was closing a like a Porsche better. door, yeah, right? It, 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 it just mm -hmm. puts more... Everything gets in better alignment on your hinge pins. Uh, everything's going to work out better back here. But, you know, you can do this, and everything you do here is going to affect everything out here. If I push this hinge in here, top of this door is going in, bottom of the door is coming out. Mm -hmm. If I push in this hinge, bottom of the door is going in, top of the door is going out. If I push this hinge in down here, and this goes in, and this is out, I can still then have an option to move the top hinge to make this one. So there's a little bit of dividing that's gonna go on, but that's basically the principle in how the hinges up front relate to the rear corners as they transition here and here, your focus points. And then, of course, this way, uh, it's shimming or no shimming, depending on that gap. Right now, we're very close. We're three millimeters here, and here, but here and here, you know, four millimeters, I mean, uh, not bad. I can live with that. Mm -hmm. It looks really good. The door functions really well, closes and sounds correct. So I think we'll just stop here for this. We may have to make some micro adjustment. Can we see the shims that, uh, yeah. cause so, so this particular car, I have, I believe I have two shims and they're, the ones I have are Identical to those, they're 1.5 millimeters thick. So here's shims, these are shims that I pulled off my car um, originally. And then I made my those own are, shims. That's thinner. Yeah, right? I made these. Yeah. Um, I used some aluminum mm -hmm. and then use this as a template. Right, so we stack them up. We can get a micro adjustment. We can get even closer to where we need to get. And one shim is gonna make a huge difference. Yeah. Obviously if I put this little tiny shim in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see that? Look at that. Makes it big. Yeah, it's it's gonna gonna but yeah. if I try to cram this guy in here, it, there's no way. It's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. That's the factory one, and yeah. the other one was the one that you made. Right. right? And so you can make your own shims. Mm -hmm. Should be made out of metal, aluminum, various gauges. Um, but anyhow, yep. that's the shimmy. Okay, so we got this door um, in about the same percentage of rightness to the other door. I'm going to say 98%. Uh, where we like it and everything's functioning well. The only thing we don't like is uh, the hinge location at the bottom of our our uh, rocker panel here. We can see we're out here and we've loosened all these bolts in here. We try to drive the door in as far as we can and mm -hmm. we can't get any more out of it. Um, so that's it for now on this setting. We're gonna to have to live with this for the moment. I don't wanna do any more here. This little gap right here in relation to the rocker and the yeah. bottom of the door is what you're saying. Right, so if this goes in, it's gonna change some things back here. Let's take a look and see what's going on back here. So right now, we're, we're pretty good here. We can see, you know, we're out a little bit on the bottom. If, if we could move that hinge in, that's gonna correct a lot of this, however, you know, somewhere in the field here. Let's see that again without the light because I think it's overexposing it. Okay, so right yeah. here, you can see oh, yeah. we're right. So if we move that in, we're gonna lose that. However, more of the door is out. You see that gap in there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yep. Then right here, and as we move here, it's 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 the same thing. So uh -huh. by moving that hinge in, everything goes this way. All that gets better. The problem with moving it in now is is this. So we're where we need to be here, but as we move up here, we can see in that gap. See that? You can see the doors low a little bit there in the middle, right? That's well, the gap you're talking about, like right in here. What's it's... happening is we got this kind of business going on. We're not flush. If you look at it from the top, uh -huh. just go straight down with the camera. If you can get... Oh yeah, I see. Okay, yeah. you see that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so if I pull, if I push this door farther in on that hinge, that's going to exacerbate that. It's going to get even worse. Mm -hmm. Okay, as we come up here, we're we're more right, and we get to our fixed points. This is where we want to be. So we're about as good. You know, we're a little high here. Um, but as far as an initial setting before we move on to the hood and the cowl, I think we're pretty good. So we open the door, close it. it it's working like it should, sounding about like it should. Mm -hmm. And we've had to move the, uh, the striker plate and everything to, to get it to uh, be where we want it. Um, we had some issues where we were touching this edge on this rubber seal, which was stopping the door from closing. This is kind of last after everything's set. We'll go in and we'll dial in the the angles of the framework this way and this way to clear here and clear all this stuff. But that's after. As long as it's not interfering with all this business down here. Mm -hmm. This is a good enough setting to move on. Now why don't we want to do this right now? Well, we could do it right now, but it could be for, for nothing. You're saying in terms of making the holes bigger right, on the hinges. We're pull the door off. It's huge. <laughs> yeah. Two guy job there. We're gonna have to open up all of those holes. And we're gonna bring it back, readjust, re go back. So you're talking two, three hours for that one operation. If we set the hood and we find everything's good with the hood, and we set this fender and everything's worked out, and we find that our gap here uh, this way to each other, that we don't want to move this in then we leave it mm -hmm. right so then we're just going to live with that and then the hood actually marries up to a proper or the fender marries up to it properly right but we don't know that until we go farther into the equation so right now we're 98 percent with both doors i think they're working pretty good we're going to move on now to the hooding cowl and get that set great okay guys we're going to take a short break here uh, we've been battling this hood now for well over an hour uh, we're making some progress on it but baby steps we had to pull the struts, reattach the struts, pull the struts, reattach the struts on both sides as we're trying to lower and adjust this hood gap. Um, we're really at a point now where the final adjustment is going to be better and simpler made if somebody can get inside the trunk with the trunk closed. So we're going to take a break here and pause. While I'm gone, uh, Dwayne's going to work on pulling the gas tank out look at that situation so another problem you might have if you're trying to adjust and you don't want to get yourself trapped in this kind of a deal but if you're trying to adjust all these gaps um, everything you do up there is going to affect this point down here so if your car is closing and you're trying to modify these in a big way or a small way you could affect the way it closes on this latch so we've taken the latch off and done our adjustment testing by pressing down to see what's going on up there for safety. Now, if we latch it and can't get it unlatched, we're, we're really screwed here. So that's why we're just going to pull the tank. There's no fuel in there. It's simple to do. you got three brackets that hold it down in a fuel line, and it's out of there. And then we have safe access inside if anything goes wrong. I will try to crawl in here and work those side adjustments here. Um, while Dwayne is on the top side uh, pressing down because the, to get this hinge plate on the side of the car and tweaked at the right angle, the right farness back or forward, the right angle, it's, it's huge. There's a lot, a lot going on there. Um, so anyways, Dwayne's going to work on this. Nothing we can do with the fenders at this point. Um, and then we're going to come back and uh, have another go at this one. I think we're, we're almost there, but really it just be a lot simpler 
if we pull that tank out.